quick video on how to add fractions, primarily for the ASVAB military placement exam. Uh, this is one thing that a lot of people really have trouble with and shows itself quite frequently in both the arithmetic reasoning and the mathematical knowledge portion of the exam. Um, if you're a member of the channel, please feel free to post any comments, ask me uh, any trouble you're having, and I'll try and make a short video like this. So I had a comment, you know, like I just can't get this idea adding fractions. Okay, so to add fractions requires the understanding that a fraction represents part of a whole. The top number is how many parts, the bottom number is the whole. You can easily add parts of a whole if they are of the same size. So if they have the same number in the bottom, that's called the denominator, then it's really easy to add. You just add across the top, keep the bottom the same. So here's the first case scenario. If I have one fifth plus two fifths, I add right across the top to get three. I keep the bottom the same, fifths. So one fifth plus two fifths is three fifths. That's how easy it is if the denominators are the same. However, usually the denominators are not the same. And now let's take a look at that. So fractions with different denominators now what you have to do is find the least common denominator. So this is the smallest number that both denominators divide into evenly. Once you have that, you want to convert each fraction to the equivalent fraction with that least common denominator. And then once you have that common denominator, add across the top, keep the bottom the same. So add the numerators, the top numbers, keep the bottom number, and then simplify. So right here, I'm looking for what number will three and six both go into? That number will be six. Okay, so that's step one, least common denominator is six. Now I think, how do I turn a six into a six? It's already a six, I don't have to do anything. Well, how do I turn a three into a six? I have to multiply it by two. How do I turn a three into a six? I multiply it by two. I can't just multiply something by two without affecting the value. I have to have an equivalent. So the way I do that is I multiply by a factor of one. Two over two is the equivalent of one. Anything multiplied by one does not change the value. So I'm gonna multiply by two over two to give me two times one, two, two times three, six, plus this fraction, one over six, now I have that common denominator. This 2 6 is the equivalent of 1 3rd. They have the same weight. They are the same thing. They are equivalent. But now I've converted it to a similar denominator. So now I have 2 6 plus 1 6. So I've done that. Now I add across the top to get 3. Keep the bottom number the same, 6. So my answer is 3 6. Step four, simplify. Well, three will go into three one time. Three will go into six two times. These are equivalents. They have the same weight. If you give me uh, half of a dollar, it is the equivalent of 50 cents. They have the same weight. This is just a reduced fraction. Okay, let's take a look at the next problem. I would pause the video here and do this problem before I do it. Make sure you understand the ideas. Unpause, watch how I do it. So I have two thirds plus one quarter. I'm looking for my least common denominator. What will three go into and four? 12 is the only number they'll go into, right? This will go into three, six, nine, 12. This will not go into six or nine. This will go into eight, 12. So the only one that they will both go into is a 12. How do I convert three into a 12? Well, I have to multiply it by four. I can't just multiply it by one over four. I can only multiply it by a factor of one so as not to affect the value. So I'm gonna multiply that two thirds by four over four. To get an equivalent, four times two is eight. Four times three is 12. Remember my least common denominator in this problem was 12. How do I get that four into a 12? Well, I have to multiply it by three to get to a 12. I can only multiply by one. I'm looking for an equivalent fraction with a bottom number, denominator of 12. 
1 times 3 is 3, 4 times 3 is 12. So I found my least common denominator, 12. I converted them into equivalent fractions with that common denominator. They both have that common denominator, 12. I add the numerators, I add the top numbers, 11, 8 plus 3 is 11. Keep the bottom number, 12. There's my answer. Now I simplify, is there anything that'll go into 11 and 12? There is not, so it's as simple as can be. Answer to this problem right here is 11 twelfths. Okay, let's do this last one, 4 fifths plus 2 sevenths. Again, what I'd highly recommend you do is pause the video, try the problem, unpause the video, watch how I do it. Least common denominator, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. The only thing that this and this 7 will go into is 35. So I have to multiply this by 7 over 7 and this by 5 over 5. I am multiplying my first fraction by 1. It is not changing the value of it. It is only giving me a new equivalent. 7 times 4 is 28. 7 times 5 is 35. My second fraction right here, this fraction right here, 2 times 5 is 10. 7 times 5 is 35. This blue is the equivalent of this, 2 sevenths. It just has been multiplied by a factor of 1 to get that common denominator. So step one, find that least common um, denominator. So that's going to be 35. Find the equivalent fractions, 28 35 plus 10 35 Step three, add across the top, 38. Keep the bottom the same. That's my answer right there. Step four, simplify. This is called an improper fraction because the numerator is greater than the denominator. So I'm going to turn it into a mixed number. I'm going to do that by going 35 goes into 38 one time. Once 35 goes into 38, I have 3 left over. So it is 1 and 3 35ths. This and this are equivalent. They are both correct answers. If it asks for a mixed number, it would be this, or an improper fraction, it would be this. You need to be able to go back and forth between the two because this might sometimes be the multiple choice answer or this one. Again, they are equivalent. They are both correct. Uh, hopefully, that was helpful on how to add fractions. Adding fractions is actually the hardest part of fractions because you have to have that common denominator. So you have to multiply by factors of one to get that common denominator. Once you do that, then you add across the top, keep the bottom the same, then you simplify. Subtraction is exactly the same. You would just... If this were subtraction, 28 minus 10, and then that would give you that number, but your bottom stays the same. All right, well, thanks for watching. Hopefully that answered any questions you have on how to add fractions. It is really a key concept for any standardized math exam.